uh, we're proud to pre present uh, this evening, and it'll be a, a relatively lengthy report on the bond program uh, progress from the 14 bond and the 19 bond. bond. And I can, I can tell you, and I saw this statistic today, and it really shocked me, that did, did you know that one out of every 10 children in the United States lives in the state of Texas? And then of that number, one out of every 50 public school children in the state of Texas attend a CIFAIR school. So when you, when you think about that number, you can see how many children that we are educating uh, here in our schools in, in CIFAIR uh, ISD. Uh, the uh, update that I'm going to, to uh, give you today, if you look up on your screen right there, you can see the bond 2014, and you can see just below it bond 2019. So if you'll look in the right corner of every uh, page as we go through this, you can see which uh, bond program that it relates to, and then some of them that will be crossover. You'll see both of them there, but it just helps you keep uh, straight uh, which bond program we are talking about. Uh, the next slide, if uh, we could roll that forward, please. And you, you can see the breakdown of the 2014 uh, summary and where the money was spent. And I want you to concentrate there on the yellowish orange looking color there where it says safety and security enhancements. And then flip it over to the next slide to 2019. That is really if the only major difference from, from the 14 to the 19 program. All of the other areas, if you look at the pie graph, you will see that we spent money basically in the same uh, areas percentage-wise except safety and security where we increased the percentage uh, for 2019. Something that I'm really proud of is that uh, all the way back to 2011, CIFAIR ISD was uh, addressing safety and security. In fact, is you see a lot of the uh, laws that were passed in this last legislative session, CIFAIR ISD was already doing many of those things. And in fact, it was amazing as we went through the governor's checklist, uh, CIFAIR ISD had already completed most of that. So uh, we're proud to be ahead of the curve there and we appreciate the community uh, helping us continue uh, to say, stay ahead of the curve when it comes to uh, safety and security. An interesting fact, uh, as you look at those pie graphs and just kind of go back and forth between those, the 14 and 19, you can see facilities, renovations, and additions is the biggest part of the pie uh, graph, and that's where we spend the majority of mo uh, the money uh, in those bond programs because, uh, as this board knows, but maybe the community doesn't know, is we're, we're trying to maintain over 18 uh, million square feet and uh, that requires uh, 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 constant uh, renovation work throughout our 91 campuses and all, also numerous uh, facilities. So uh, just to keep up with that, you, you uh, always like to think you take a look at your house and periodically you have to do things to make sure that your house is, is kept up and we wanna make, want to make sure that we take care of the taxpayers' investments and make sure that all of our campuses are not, not only uh, have uh, we keep them up, but also that we have equal opportunities across the district by constantly uh, renovating our older facilities to make them uh, as new as possible and give all of our students um, equal uh, access to great facilities. One of the uh, things that I'm most proud of also in the uh, 14 bond and even going back further than that is some of the efficient uh, use of design plans that we've used throughout uh, CIFAIR ISD to stretch the dollars. Many uh, parts of our district that were uh, supposed to be renovated, we've been able to replace instead uh, just because of the uh, uh, very efficient use of the dollars that we uh, have available and also some of the uh, earnings on interest uh, that we've made from those bond dollars. Lastly, I would say that um, when we went to the community and to our employees about the 2014 bond program, we said it was a six-year program. Uh, the 19 bond program was the same. You, you, you cannot physically or fiscally um, do $1.2 billion worth of work in one year. 
nor can you do 1.7 billion in one year. So that is a that it stretches out over six years, both programs. In fact, we're still working with dollars from the 2014 uh, bond program, and we'll continue to do, to do that through next year. So you'll see that as we go uh, through this process. So we've got a um, relatively lengthy uh, presentation this evening, uh, but I think it will be something that will be of great interest uh, to everyone. And uh, so I'm going to hand it off to uh, Matt Morgan to kick us off. Uh, let me just add one thing. If the board doesn't mind, if you would kind of write your questions down so we can just go straight through it and then address all of your questions at the end of the um, um, presentation. Good evening, President Kopey, uh, members of the board, Dr. Henry. I'm pleased to be able to present the facilities portion of the 2014-2019 bond presentation. I'm happy to announce, as, as you know, Dr. Henry mentioned that the 2014 bond was a six-year bond. We are on schedule. We will complete phase five this summer with the completion of the Hamilton Middle School renovation and the Lieby Middle School renovation. Phase six, we'll also complete most of that this summer as well, with the exception of elementary 57 and 58, which are scheduled to open as per PASA in 2022 and 2023, respectively. Just kind of want to highlight some of the projects that we've completed in the 14 bond. We'll start with some of the new facilities. We completed Hoover Elementary, Wells Elementary School, Matsky Elementary School, the natatorium and the renovation of Pridgen Stadium. And I'm happy to see that I think I'm the, doc, I got to see Dr. Henry, I think you were the first person that dove off the diving board uh -huh. at the yeah. natatorium. I think I still have that video. Well, <laughs> well, we can't really afford that much water. <laughs> I'm just joking, I'm just joking, sir. Just go ahead and drop that <laughs> mic, man. <Okay. laughs> we also completed the West Green Ag and Transportation Centers. We also did a lot of major renovations, and I believe in speaking with Mr. Sprague, since 1998, we've included major renovations in our bond programs, and that's to bring some of our older campuses up to current program standards. We've also uh, renovated the facade so that it looks fresh, so just we can have equity throughout the district. We've completed Bain Elementary School as part of the 14 bond, and Adam Elementary School as part of the 14 bond. We also did Watkins Middle School and completed that project. We currently have Rowe Middle School under construction, and it is on schedule and ready, or will be ready to open in August of 2020. We also just recently completed the Leonard Brodigan Center. It opened in August of 2018. Beautiful facility. And we also completed work, artificial turf, and tracks at our high schools. And as you know, artificial turf can be very expensive, and we want the competition tracks to be ready for our high school athletes. But Dr. Henry has been very big on community access to our facilities. So we are renovating all the middle school tracks and so that in providing the community access to the middle school tracks. And we've completed 11 of those. We've got seven more to go. Before Dr. Henry asks, I'll tell you which ones those are. <laughs> That's his favorite question when he gets me in a meeting. We've got Hamilton Middle School's track, which will be completed August of 2020. Hopper, Kayla, Salyards, and Smith will be completed by December of 2020. And we'll be bringing a package to the board more in April to start construction and renovation at Blyle and Campbell, and that will include their tracks. And those should be completed in 2021, depending on the phasing schedule. We also completed security enhancements. Video buzzers, video cameras and buzzers, lockdown panic buttons, emergency uh, call stations, radio communication towers, or, and also secure vestibules with bullet resistant glass. So this is the remainder of the phase six. Let me explain how to read the chart just a little bit because there's gonna be quite a few more. We've broken out the renovations and all the renovations are listed at the bottom, but any larger project I broke out separately with a bar graph so you can know. And the beginning of the bar represents start of design. The end of the bar with the star and the date or, uh, indicates the projected substantial completion. I also want to note that on these <coughs> phasing charts that 
they're subject to change. It depends on programming needs. It depends on the availability of contractors. Uh, if there are special projects that Dr. Henry wants moved, we, might, we will adjust these phasing charts. But the phase six, most of the phase six work, the renovations will be completed in August of 2020. Most of this work is very small scope. As I mentioned earlier, elementary 57 is projected to open in August of 2022, and elementary 58 is projected to open in August of 2023. As we started working on the 2019 bond, we still had some schools in phase six of the 14 that had significant renovations. And as we developed the recommendations that we were taking to the bond steering committee, it became apparent that we were about to start renovations on a campus and potentially, should the bond pass, go in and tear out some of the, the work that we'd just done. So what we decided to do was combine 1419 scope, which I was mentioned Millsap was one of those schools. What that allowed us to do is get economies, greater economies of scale so we can do a more significant renovation. But I think more importantly, we're only going to interrupt those campuses once during this bond. I didn't want to go into a campus and do a small renovation come back two or three years later, inconvenience that campus, and do another renovation. So in the combined 14-19 work, this will include the security for open concept classrooms, classroom additions, additional card readers on exterior doors, additional impact glass, or impact resistant glass, classroom phones, the security fencing, and furniture replacements. We were able to get furniture replacements included, so every campus that had not had a furniture replacement since 2014 was included in the 2019 bond. Just to give you an idea, we were talking about this is a 3D rendering of what a Millsap classroom will look like. During the security audit or the recommendation to the board or the bond committee, we were going to segment our open concept classrooms. And what that means is we were going to create pods of four to eight classrooms. And it would still be sort of an open concept, but they will be able to secure, it creates corridors and they can secure their doors. There will be intruder lock sets on each doors. Each classroom will have a classroom phone and additional lockdown buttons. And this also represents some of the new furniture that we're looking at as well. Also, Dr. Henry, was we started working on safety and security, I think back in, well, we've always worked on safety and security, but it became even more important or an emphasis on it back in 2018. So as part of the 19 bond, we included security fencing. Dr. Henry was wanted us to get started as quickly as possible so we could provide security for our kids. So we began grouping schools together and we created a district-wide security fencing project. We've already completed the group one. We completed that in, in November of 19 and we'll be complete with the other groups or group five by October of 2020. And just a note that we, the schools that, we, that are included in the district-wide security fencing project are the schools that are in the later phases of the 19 bond schedule. Schools that were in the first phases, phases one and two, we're going to include that fencing in the project. I didn't want the other schools to have to wait four, five, six years to get their fencing. And if you've driven by some of our schools, the fencing is really attractive. It is six foot ornamental, ornamental black fencing. There are card access gates next to the buildings so that the teachers can use their ID cards to get in and out during school hours but we can also remotely unlock those so that our community has access to our playgrounds after hours and on weekends. So the 2019 bond is also a six phase. We're putting the projects in six phase. We've already started design on the phase one and we'll complete phase six projected to completion August 2027 with all the renovations and new facilities. Phase one includes renovations. It also includes baseball and softball turf renovations and dugouts, and those will be complete in August of 2020. We are doing, for the first, we've divided the athletic fields over the first three years of the bond. The first summer we'll be doing Cy Falls, Cy Ridge High School, and Cy Ranch. And at Cy Ranch and Cy Ridge, we're increasing the seating capacity for softball so that we can have regional tournaments, tournaments or, and playoffs. I think we're increasing that to about 875 average seats for each uh, field. At Cy Falls and Cy Woods, we're increasing the capacity of the baseball seating. And we're going to increase that to about 1,420 seats. That's projected right now. Uh, athletics wanted to have, be able to have locations in different parts of the district geographically to where we could host these events. 
We're also just just a reminder that because of the size of Cypher ISD, we're in two athletic districts now, and so we we wanted to have competition uh, size uh, areas on both uh, sides of the district because of that. We'll also be starting the high school band tower replacements, and we should complete that by August of 2020, and renovation at the exhibit center and the science resource center, and then furniture replacements. And in general, for the most part, furniture replacements will be included in the renovations, but we had some schools that we've completed the renovations on last summer, and again, I didn't want those schools to have to wait until the end of the bond to get their furniture replacements, so at Cook, Hamilton, Thornton, and Langham Creek will do furniture replacements this summer. Phase two, the renovations will be, should be complete in August of 2023. Again, we'll do baseball and softball renovations at Cy Creek, Cy Lakes, Jersey Village, and Langham Creek. We'll also include the new administration building in the Visual Performing Arts Center, and we've already started uh, programming on both. We've had over almost 30 meetings with the ISC staff to do programming and identify needs for the new administration building and the projected substantial completion for both of those facilities is August of 2022. We'll also start the new transportation center and the Brodigan Center Kate additions. In phase three, renovations will be complete by August of 2024. The baseball and softball renovations, this will be the last year, includes Bridgeland, Cy Park, and Cy Springs. We'll also include the Ben Bradley expansion the Cypher Multi-Complex Renovation, and the Cypher High School, and the repurpose of ISC, ISC West. So just from clarification on the multi-campus site renovation, that includes the drainage for that site. It will impact all, it will impact Cypher High School, Lampkin and Arnold for drainage, also the roadways and reorientation of the athletic fields. It's a significant project. For phase four, we, the renovations will be complete by August of 2025, and currently PASA projects Elementary 59, a need for that to be complete by August of 2024, and Middle School 20 by August of 2024 as well. We've already started design on Middle School 20, and we are prepared to move that up should the needs be, should it be required. For Phase 5, mostly renovations in Phase 5, with the completion, substantial completion of August of 2026, and the support service storage with a substantial completion date of August 2024. And then we finished with phase six, and again, mostly renovations, some pretty significant renovations, substantial completion of August 2027, and the repurpose of Winford High School projected August of 2026. I'm gonna pass the clicker to Mr. Powell to update you on transportation. Good evening. For the transportation portion, the 2014 bond included the new West Green Transportation Center that's located in the southwest portion of the school district that was completed at the end of 2016. We also installed GPS on all of our school buses that it enabled us to track the location of our school buses, employ telematics to increase repair efficiencies, and it enabled us to account for our students and alert our parents when students get on and off the school bus. It also provided for the purchase of 436 new school buses for the growth and replacement. This also allowed us to reinstate transportation services to all students that live within the two miles of their home campus. For the 2019 bond, the Long Range Planning Committee included another new transportation center to be located at the northwest portion of the school district, 467 new school buses for growth and replacement, and the upgrade of our current GPS hardware from V3s to V4s due to the industry phasing out the V3 hardware. The Long Range Planning Committee also included a police vehicle replacement schedule, as you see here. Phase one included the purchase of 27 vehicles, this purchase has been completed. No vehicles are scheduled to be replaced in phases two or six of the bond project, but we have 31 vehicles to replace in phase three, 13 vehicles in phase four, and 13 vehicles in phase five. At this time, I would like to turn it over to Paula Ross, Assistant Superintendent of Technology and Information Services. 
Good evening. Let me begin by stating that each of the technology services bond 2014 projects have been marked at 100% completion. The first area that I would like to highlight is our wireless network. Wireless networks have quickly become the primary way users and devices connect today. With Bond 2014, Technology Services installed a high-speed wireless infrastructure that provides connectivity for greater than 400,000 wireless devices. These calculations were based upon a maximum of three devices per student or employee, including devices such as laptops, tablets, phones, and our wearable devices. Depending upon the type of device, there are three separate wireless networks available. CFISD-CP provides connectivity for district-owned devices. CFISD-BYOT, or Bring Your Own Technology, provides connectivity for non-district-owned devices. And CFISD-Visitor provides secured wireless access for our visitors. Technology Services has deployed and supports almost 10,000 wireless access points, providing both indoor and outdoor coverage at every campus and administrative site. Next, I would like to highlight our network infrastructure. The Consortium for School Networking, or COSIN, is an association which promotes the partnership and awareness of emerging technologies in K-12 education. The CFISD network was designed based upon course COSIN's smart education network by design. The network design provided a shift from an older network design model to a more modern, resilient, flexible network that will support the increasing demands of teaching and learning. The design includes two core data centers, one data center at ISC and a second data center at Cyrus One, a co-location facility. Upgraded campus and administrative site switching and routing, District, district hub connectivity design, providing fiber connectivity to both data centers with hubs, geographically dis distributed throughout the district, dis designed to provide connectivity to our second data center at a co-location facility. Increased internet and data center firewall protection. This next portion of the bond was dedicated to upgrading network cabling, fiber optic connectivity, power in our network closets located at campuses, service centers, hubs, and data centers to improve access and provide for faster connectivity. CAT 6A cabling was installed at all sites to provide increased data transmission rates for our wireless network. Hub fiber was designed to help to reduce site outages by providing fiber connectivity to both data centers. The network design also included geographically diverse fiber entry points into each campus or site with the goal to provide and maintain network connectivity. This section also began to address the need for adequate power and air conditioning in all of our network closets. With Bond 2019, we will continue to improve and increase our environmental support for almost 500 network closets providing connectivity at our campuses and administrative sites. Assessments are critical over the life cycle of a data center facility because technology is constantly being upgraded. There is a need to periodically evaluate the most effective way of delivering power, cooling, and telecommunications over the course of a data center's usable life. Bond 2014 provided us the ability to upgrade or modernize the ISC data center with improved power, cooling, rack space, UPS, and generator backup. In conjunction with the data center upgrade, Technology Services also embarked upon a server virtualization project that brought a positive transformation in areas such as reduced hardware cost, improved server provisioning and deployment, better disaster recovery, efficient and economic use of energy, and increased staff productivity. Lastly, many organizations are partnering with co-location providers to support growth and limit costs rather than expanding their own data centers. Our second data center is at Cyrus One and enables SciFair to place our tier one applications such as finance and gradebook in a specifically designed and highly secure data center without space, technology, or connectivity constraints. Technology Services upgraded the older analog phone system with a voice over internet protocol system. This upgrade has taken place over several phases over the course of the past four years, with the last phase completed this fall, 2019. 
The completion of this project positioned us to meet the new requirements of Senate Bill 11, stating that district employees have classroom access to a telephone. Enterprise desktop management was installed to manage the configuring and patching of almost 60,000 staff and student windows and Mac devices. This tool allows for better policy management and distribution of 400 plus software packages to our students and teachers. Administrative devices were also completed on a five-year rotating basis. With Vaughn 2019, Technology Services plans to maintain and enhance our network infrastructure, but since cybersecurity incidents seem to be growing exponentially, all projects will be conducted with a cybersecurity focus. Our team is ahead of most districts in that we have a cybersecurity specialist on staff and we are already working to establish reasonable protective measures such as routine patching of software and removing obsolete hardware and software, training and educating our staff on security awareness, inventory refresh of all hardware and software, planning for protective measure, measures such as cyber vault technology for our backup environment. Our plan is to build a sustainable, long-range plan for cybersecurity. Our staff has collaborated with other districts around the state to create a cybersecurity template for our plan. Our goal is to present this cybersecurity plan to you later this spring. In closing, from a hardened security standpoint, Technology Services is joining forces with our facilities department to deploy phones in the classroom. We are currently conducting a pilot for phones in the classroom at the new Leonard Brodigan Center with plans to expand the pilot to a high school, middle school, and elementary school this spring. Next, I would like to turn the presentation over to Becky Cook, Director of Instructional Technology. Good evening. Um, tonight I'd like to provide you with an update on the 2014 bond funds that we purchased, uh, used to purchase instructional technology and give you a quick overview of planned phase one purchases with the 2019 bond funds for instructional technology. As you may recall, the 2014 bond funds were, play, were planned for a six year period. In year one, the primary focus was to get the network infrastructure upgraded to support the planned instructional technology pur purchases. The first year, only Woodard Elementary School and the U.S. History laptops were purchased. Starting in year two of the bond, purchases were made to support classroom technology and other projects. We are now in year six of the six-year bond. I'm happy to report that we've expended approximately 80% of the planned bond purchases to date. Currently, we are planning the purchase of student mobile technology for secondary, which are the computer on wheels, which we lovingly call cows, completing the library purchases and planning for the opening of the new Rowe Middle School. We still have some new campuses to open with the 2014 bond funds. We have steadily been rolling out equipment by curriculum area. We chose to roll out the equipment for existing class classrooms by um, curriculum areas so that the training would be focused on the new technology being integrated into the classroom. Currently, most of the classrooms in the district have received the standard classroom technology. The first picture, you, I know you guys always love pictures, right? So the first picture is a picture of a Thornton Middle School student using the Promethean panel to solve a math problem. The next picture over is a picture of a blended learning algebra classroom at Cypress Park High School. They are using the laptops in one of the learning studios to work collaboratively to solve math problems. The next picture is a student at Woodard Elementary School using the FlexCat pods to check in with his teacher and ask a question. The teacher was working with a group of students and was able to answer his question from her location back in the classroom. The last picture shows a Warner um, Elementary third grader using the hover cam, which is a document camera, in his language arts classroom to show his work to his classmates. I would also like to draw your attention to the level of student engagement that you see in all the pictures. All elementary schools have received their cows, three carts of 20 Chromebooks and two carts of 20 Windows laptops. We have fewer cows now because teachers now have student classroom devices. The secondary cows will be ordered and delivered this summer and spring, or spring and summer, sorry. 
Um, the CALS typically mirror the student devices provided for each curriculum area. For example, middle school English language arts have Chromebooks, so the CAL for that curriculum area will also be Chromebooks. Middle school math has laptops, so their CAL will be laptops. This picture shows students at Dean Middle School taking advantage of the CALS to create a one-to-one -one, one -one learning environment. The students are engaged and focused on the learning at hand, which happens to be math. The high school labs project is currently 57% complete. The U.S. History one-to-one -one labs were purchased in the first year of the 2014 bond. Credit recovery labs are in the process of being replaced this spring and also targeted for replacement are the CTE labs at each high school. The labs will be re replaced starting this spring with completion slated for summer 2020. The library project is well underway. We are currently 75% deployed at all campuses. The libraries have received their Promethean panels, portable light speed sound systems, cows, teacher laptops, and circulation equipment. Still left to purchase are robotics equipment for checkout, touchscreen monitors, and other creative collaborative equipment for students to utilize. The expected completion of the library project is summer 2020. All special campuses, ALC East, ALC West, Carpenter Center, Carlton Center, and Brodigam Center have received 100% of the equipment from the bond package. The campuses mirror what traditional campuses have in each classroom. The libraries are a hub for learning for students. And with the addition of technology tools such as laptops, Chromebooks, and Promethean panels, students are able to access a wide variety of resources. Many students use the library technology tools to complete assignments, do research, or collaborate on projects, as demonstrated in these photos by students from Cypress Springs High School. In phase one of the 2019 bond, planned replacements include some of the Planned replacements included, include some of the classroom technology at Woodard Elementary, which, remember, was the first campus to receive equipment from the 2014 bond. So we have a five-year replacement cycle. The student devices for the U.S. History classrooms and the Chromebook and laptop cows at all the elementary campuses. New initiatives that will begin in phase one are additional technology for special education classrooms, flex space technology, a new sound system for all elementary school PE classrooms, and wireless display connectivity in the classrooms. The wireless display connectivity will allow teachers to become completely untethered from their Promethean panel and still be able to walk around the room and project from their laptop from anywhere in the classroom. The teachers have asked for this, and we've made it a priority to look for a solution in phase one. And now I'll pass it to Karen Smith, Chief Financial Officer. Good evening. Good evening. Since this is a bond, it's just a moment there. Since this is a bond update for the 2014-2019 bond authorizations, included on this slide are bonds that were issued as of the time the voters approved the 2014 bond referendum. As you will see, all of the 2004 and 2007 bond authorizations have been issued. In October of 2019, the district sold $158.8 million of the 2014 bond authorization, leaving $56.6 million of unissued bonds. The district also issued $287 million of the 2019 bond authorization at, this, at the same time. The district anticipates issuing the remainder of the 2014 bond authorization and approximately 300 million of the 2019 bond authorization in October of 2020. We expect to issue the remainder um, of the 2019 bond authorization in increments of 300 million annually. Although taxpayers were told the $1.2 billion bond authorization could result in a tax increase uh, or an increase in the debt service tax rate of four and a half cents, the actual debt service tax rate decreased by one penny in tax year 2014. The maximum to potential uh, debt service tax rate increase for the 2019 bond authorization over a seven year period is three cents. 
The projected tax rate in 2014 and 2019 included the current authorization taken to the voters as well as selling the remainder of the unissued bond authorizations. So for example, with the 2019 bond authorization, we had to take into consideration the tax rate associated with the 2019 bond authorization and anything that was left unissued in the 2014 bond authorization. You will see here that the maximum projected tax increase on a $200,000 home would be $40.50. There will be no tax increase for those 65 and older. Some of the assumptions considered when estimating the impact of the bond authorization taken to the voters are property value increases, tax collection rates, bond interest rates, the underlying bond ratings, and then bond maturities. As you will see here on this slide, this, it reflects the bond maturities for instructional technology of five years, infrastructure technology of 10 years, buses of 12 to 15 years, and new facilities, renovations, and additions of 25 years. Therefore, to emphasize, the district would, be would not be financing computers over 25 years, but instead over a period of time of five years. I would also like to highlight that we are very conservative when we are estimating and modeling these assumptions that can impact the tax rate. We do not take into consideration things such as bond, uh, bond refundings, maybe issuing variable rate bonds, and uh, interest on invested debt service revenues. This slide encompasses the total tax rate history since the voters approved the 2014 bond referendum through the current tax year. As you can see, the total tax rate was decreased one penny in tax year 2014 and seven pennies in tax year 2019. Now I will turn it over to Ms. Leslie Francis to discuss bond communication. Thank you, Karen. A detailed and strategic communication plan ensures our team stays on target with all of the district's communication needs. We especially understand the importance of sharing with the community how taxpayer dollars are used for bond projects. We accomplish this primarily through photos and videos posted on social media and the district website. You may notice on our bond communication schedule that each week something is posted regarding bond 2014 or bond 2019. Items in white are Facebook photo albums, gold are videos, and blue and purple are written communication and presentations such as tonight's. In addition to the traditional methods of taking photos of bond projects, we are reaping the benefits of the multi-vista camera system. This system is installed at each construction site and allows us to access photos remotely through the construction process. On this slide, you can see several examples of Facebook photo albums, including Hamilton Middle School renovations, the construction of Rowe Middle School, and campus security fencing. Based on the number of Facebook likes, our community really appreciates these photo updates. Security fencing was recently installed at 11 of our campuses, many of which shared existing fencing with neighborhoods. These campuses distributed the letter on the screen to their parents and community. The letter indicated that installation of security fencing was a result of listening to the concerns of community members and that any inconveniences to the public would be far outweighed by increased safety for our students and staff. We also include bond messages in local publications as part of our district's marketing plan. The ad you see on the screen was a thank you to the community and highlights several bond projects. This particular ad appeared in 135,000 community impact newspapers in October. www.cfisd.net slash bond is a section on the district website dedicated to information and updates from all bond referendums. Following the passage of the 2019 bond referendum, election and voting information was removed and the content was refocused on project updates. Tonight's presentation will be added to this section. 
In addition to weekly photo albums, we also want to provide the community with monthly video updates. These videos are all less than three minutes long, which enable them to be viewed and easily shared on social media. Topics this year have include the Natatorium, Gems and Tracks, the Brodigan Center, Cybersecurity, and Campus Security Fencing. At this time, I'd like to share the fencing video with you. We have always wanted our community to utilize our playgrounds and open areas after school hours and on weekends. However, after some of the recent events that have occurred around the country, we listen to our parents in our schools and are adding fencing to our elementary playgrounds and portable buildings. This video shows you how we are balancing student safety with community access. In addition, we are providing security fencing for our portable buildings too, so the guests or visitors to the campus have to go through the front office, check in, go through the proper security screenings before they're allowed access to the children. The fencing provides that layer of security as one of the many steps into, that we've added into our schools uh, through the last couple of bonds. And so the fencing uh, helps set the perimeter and helps keep our kids safe. There may be some minor inconveniences, particularly for schools that have residential fences adjacent to the playgrounds, but our position is that minor inconveniences are far outweighed by the additional security that we can provide for our students. During the day, the perimeter will be secured. There will be card access gates closer to the building that will be locked during school hours. After hours and on weekends, come out and enjoy our facilities. They'll be open for you. This concludes the 2014 and 2019 bond update. We would be glad to take questions or comments at this time.